Mueller has actually laid out his report already in a whole series of indictments and a lot of documents that go along with them. And Ryan Grimm and, and friends have pulled this thing together and put it out as a book. It's pretty astonishing. Check this out and leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe. On the line with us right now is Ryan Grimm. He is the uh, D.C. Bureau Chief of The Intercept, the uh, co-founder of Strong Arm Press, co-publisher and uh, author of the Mueller Papers. Uh, you can tweet him at Ryan Grimm, R-Y-A-N-G-R-I-M, and uh, strongarmpress.com is the website. Uh, Ryan, welcome, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. It has. It's been too long. It's great to have you on. Um, yeah. So you've published the Mueller papers. Right. What is this? What's the significance of this? What? Where'd you get the information? You know, just tell us all about it, please. Right. Well, uh, one little clarification. I'm not the, actually the author. The, the, the technical author, I suppose, would be uh, Robert Mueller. Right. Uh, along with a number of, I'm sure he has ghostwriters um, in his in his office who are helping him put it together. But you know, as it became. Uh, clear that there was a, at least a possibility that the Mueller report uh, will not see the light of day or, or at least might have to be leaked in order to see the light of day. Um, at Strong Arm Press, we started thinking, well, wait a minute. Well, he's actually been publishing pieces of the Mueller report over the last kind of year and a half. You know, each, each indictment, each sentencing memo you know, is going to be the fodder that he uses to eventually put together his report. Now, his report, who knows, who knows what it's going to have in it. But if you want to know the grist that he's developed that has turned that has been able to be turned into actual indictments, because that's what, you know, the rest of it is interesting. And we should you know, it's nice to know um, what every what all of these different actors and operatives were up to. Um, but if if you're curious what the actual crimes are that Mueller has has found, it doesn't appear that he's going to find um, any more. Now, he could always surprise us with a last minute massive sweeping indictment and roundup of half the city. Uh, but these are the these are the characters that he's uh, you know put before judges so far, and all of those indictments are public. They are a real pain to read, though. You ha you know you have to go searching around, finding the PDFs, download the PDFs. Uh, you read it for two pages. If you go away from a PDF on your phone, uh, forget about it. You know you'll you'll never find your place in there sure. again. And so, me, uh, I for one had meant to read a ton of these, but just had never gotten around to it, I'd say, oh, I've heard that that indictment's actually a good read. I'm, I'm going to read it. And then days go by and I don't. So what we did is we just found them all, formatted them, and put our own Mueller report out, so to speak. That's extraordinary. You know, there, in fact, there, there was uh, uh, some speculation that Mueller expected that there would be such opposition to his, his findings being made public that um, one of the ways that he has found to get around this, uh, this anticipated problem, uh, you know, uh, particularly watching, you know, what Nixon did back in the 70s and, you know, nearly successfully, um, but that, that uh, the way that he was going to do this was basically by leaking everything he's finding in the, in the form of these specific indictments, these, these criminal indictments. There's been over 100 of them, have there not? Right, yeah. Yeah. And th so that yeah, that's and that's so th I think that's exactly right, and it 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 serves two purposes. So, on the one hand, uh, he he gets the information out. You know, so people who want to say, well, there were no crimes committed, um, well, here here are the crimes. People want to say, well, nobody's been uh, can, uh, indicted for a crime of collusion. That's that's absolutely true. That that's correct. You know, what we have is um, a, a, a lot of peripheral stuff at this point. So. It serves his purpose to get it out. You, you know, he, uh, you know, the President Trump can't stop him from filing a sentencing memo or filing an indictment, but it also kind of whets the appetite of the public, um, and it makes it harder for, harder for people then, um, you know, to to suppress the the ultimate report. Paradoxically, though, I think it will also, if the final report is published, take some of the air out of it. In other words, you know, if if if. He, if, if you read this book that we put together called The Mueller Papers, if you read it cover to cover, you come away and be, this is a staggering crime. This is an extraordinary cast of uh, incompetent criminals who came together. Um, and, you know, they should all be uh, tossed out and locked up. Uh, but then you realize, well, I kind of knew a lot of this stuff already. Right. And, because, and that's how it is likely to be reported if there isn't much new in the Mueller report. There'll be this uh, insane amount of criminality that is exposed in the report 
but because we already know about so much of the criminality, uh, it'll just say, well, no, not, not, nothing new here. Yeah, it's like the drip, drip, drip has kind of inured right. us to it. And then on top of that, it, Trump and Giuliani go out and, well, yeah, of course I did, you know, X, Y, Z. Well, of course, you know, there's nothing wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, taking help from the Russians, uh, you know, et right. cetera. And, and, you know, at a certain level, uh, I mean, you know, even Nixon wasn't that uh, sociopathic and brazen. I mean, it's just right. mind-boggling. Um, yeah. We're talking with Ryan Grimm. He's the uh, co-founder of the Strong Arm Press, co-publisher of the Mueller Papers. StrongArmPress.com is the website. Ryan, what are the, I mean, you know, you're, you're pretty well informed. I think I am and, and the listeners to this program by and large are on the, in terms of the day-to-day -day stuff that's been going on for a year or so of, you know, Mueller's uh, various indictments. But what were the things or what are the things that people would find in this book, the Mueller Papers, um, that, that you found or refound, right. you know, as, as you yeah. point out, we kind of all rediscover these things, um, found or refound that, that are the most shocking to you, the most amazing, the most, the most uh, breathtaking? Right. I mean, so, so much of it is so good. And uh, we, we even included a blurb you know, from Jeffrey Tubin, the New Yorker, calling it, uh, calling the Mueller sentencing memos um uh, a novelistic in quality because <laughs> yeah. like they, they, you just think about this this you know roger stone is not even an extraordinary figure in this crew because they're all such extraordinary figures uh to me when i was going back through it the in, the indictments uh which were sort of pointless but served to get the get it into the public record the indictments of the dozen plus uh russian operatives that 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 indictment um, is, is fascinating to read because it relies on, you know, both intelligence as well as the, you know, in, in, as well as the investigation that they did to put together a narrative of how uh, the GRU, um, you know, goes about trying to sow discord in, in a in, in a for, in a foreign country. Um, I say it's pointless because what are the chances that you know, these guys are going to actually show up for their court date. You know, it's not not strong, but it does. But it, to your earlier point, it, it gets it out there in public. And this is not something that Putin has done exclusively uh, for Trump or even exclusively for the United States. You know, that this, this is a Russian foreign policy tactic to, you know, to go in and sow chaos in in in, in the domestic politics of countries that it wants to kind of bring down. You know, mm. Russia very much sees um, geopolitics as a zero-sum game. And so if they, can, if they can screw up the U.K. and mess around with Brexit, uh, you know, then they win. If they can screw up France and fund some right-wing fascist party, then, then they win. You know, if they can boost some right-wing party in Germany, then they, they win. In their, minds, in their minds, they win. And so it's it's important to understand what are the mechanics behind this, and and this that particular indictment, you know, goes through how they how they create social fake social media accounts, how they seed articles, how they how they then pay to like boost these articles. It goes into their attempts to convert that into uh, protests on the ground, mm -hmm. and shows them utterly incapable uh, of of doing that. You know, they can they can build a Black Lives Matter. Um, Facebook page, and they can schedule a protest, but they can't get more than two or three people to show up, which, you know, which shows you need real organizing, um, you know, to actually build social movements in a country, which shouldn't be surprising to anybody who's been in, involved in organizing. But you don't need that if you're just trying to um, throw throw junk everywhere and kind of throw dust in, in, in people's eyes. So it, like that one in particular was, was an interesting read to just to see how Russia sees its role um, in, in, in these shenanigans.